Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's do this on glasses and see how crazy we look. We look insane. We need to put our glasses back on. Hello, and welcome to the Once Upon a Corgi podcast. This is episode 40. Five? I, didn't, I did not check. <laughs> we are a crafty puppy podcast coming to you from Southern Connecticut. And you can find us at all the fun places online at Gabigail's and all of our hand dyed yarn at Once Upon a Corgi. Thank you so much for checking us out. New viewers, thank you so much for giving us a shot. I know there's a lot of really amazing knitting, crafting podcasts out there. And returning viewers, welcome back. It's a real podcast. It's happening. Sort of. We'll see. Today is Thursday, September 28th. We are all sorts of out of whack. Um, I promised you a couple of vlogs this month and I did two of them and then did not do any more. So uh, we let things pile up and we are going to do a real podcast today, but there's not gonna be really any formatting. Um, it's gonna be administrative stuff, going into Cal's, going into giveaways, then going into Rhinebeck prep, then going into a review, life stuff, shop stuff, kind of like that. And we are coming to you from our new, very messy sewing crafting nook. Uh, the office area is a complete bomb disaster. Like there is just every yarn everywhere. It is bad. So we're going to try and make this our new podcasting area. We've got our stash, which hopefully we'll have a new home soon. We've got all our sewing stuff, which... I'm still organizing. We've got our new old, this is Jake's old computer desk that I sanded and repainted into a sewing desk. So it's our new old sewing desk and I'm not going to show you the floor because um, there isn't one. You can't see it. It's a work in progress. We've only been here for like three months. So if this is your first time tuning in, welcome to the crafting nook. Hopefully it will change soon. All right, let's get into the, not the nitty gritty because it's yeah, let's get into everything because we've got some stuff to do and some stuff to talk about. First off, we had a giveaway about a month ago uh, for a skein of hedgehog fibers and a set of Haya Haya Sharp US1 knitting needles, uh, the thick circulars. I think it's 32, 32 inches, 80 centimeters. The winner that I originally pulled did not get back to me and it's been almost over a month now, so I drew a new winner. Contact me on Ravelry with your mailing address and I will try and get this out to you within the week. Uh, I'm hoping to get all the physical prizes for giveaways out as soon as possible because busy season is upon us. It is fall and it feels like it today, finally. So I used Alexa to draw a random number from the thread and the number was 111, the cramped hand, who is Betsy from, I just wrote down W, so Washington or Wyoming or Wisconsin, we have three W states. And she wanted to knit a pair of colorwork socks that I'm not gonna try and pronounce, but the pattern's not in English, so she'll just dream of them. So Betsy, who is the cramped hand, get in touch with me on Ravelry and I will get this in the mail to you. And there it is, and I will get you a new bag. The cat got into this one, so there's just teeny tiny teeth holes everywhere. He likes to chew on plastic, cause I don't know. He's a cat. 
we have another giveaway that just came in this past week, week and a half, and I've been really behind on these, so. And that is the Marina shawl, and this is by the host of the Crystal Tea Knits podcast, and it's her first Ravelry pattern. I believe it's the first pattern design in general, but I should double check on that. And I'm hopefully putting up pictures around here of these things as I'm talking about them. She donated a pattern copy to me and to you guys. So I'm going to put up a thread in the Ravelry group, which we have on Ravelry, Once Upon a Corgi podcast. Thank you so much for that. It is a wonderful looking shawl and I'm hoping next year shawls are going to be back in my repertoire. But I think you guys should definitely take a crack at it because it's very, it's like a very large, squishy, nice fall wraparound shawl last but not no it's not even last but not least. second to last but definitely not second to least the pumpkin cow mal the pumpkin mal has started so this is our second annual pumpkin make along hosted by myself and my fellow pum queen joanna from stitching the high notes it started september 15th and it goes until american thanksgiving november 23rd Yes, so that is happening. If you are a maker and would like to donate a prize to this make-along, please get in contact with me or Joanna on Ravelry, so Gabigales or Opera Joe. And we've got a couple new prizes to add in. Uh, I know Joanna listed a lot of them on her latest episode, so if you haven't seen it, stop and go watch it. It's worth it. Um, on... I don't know if I showed you these. That's not it. So one of the prizes that I am donating is this enamel pin by Hope Sick on Etsy and it is a tiny chicken McNugget dressed up as a pumpkin and if you were a child in the late to early just the 90s and you did not get these your McDonald's was doing it wrong so this is going to be in one of the prize packs we also have um, a pattern by genuine knits i hope i'm saying that right and that is a black tie affair wrap so there should be a picture of that here and we also have a copy of the pumpkin leaf lane socks by lily who has the nordic stitches podcast so thank you guys so much for donating and they're just beautiful patterns and i kind of wanted it the pumpkin leaf socks now but i should probably work on my my other pumpkin things since we're on the topic of pumpkins for this pumpkin make along I am making the Pumpkin Spice Latte Mittens by Skein Deer Knits, and I'm so excited. I was going to use um, the Colorways Pum Queen and Tweety Librarian on my iron base, which is a Tweety base, but they weren't contrasty enough, so I ripped them out, and I'm just going, I'm using Pum Queen and just a Nakey, a Nakey, uh, iron skein and so here's the cuff of my pumpkin mittens i did this all last night while listening to um the seven stones it's a collection of novellas by diana gabaldon so it's all outlander so my new bedtime routine is to listen to that and knit on mittens so i have these guys going i'm knitting them on the uh, one and a half size. I'm pretty sure my gauge is spot on for that. We will find out. And I'm using my um, Knitter's Pride Nova Cubic, so it's the square needles, and I really love them. And I, I was very upset with these needles for a very long time, but I put the wire in hot water the other night and then hung them to dry and like weighted them a little bit to straighten it out, and now I really like them. So if you don't like your needles because the wires are too curly, I would recommend that. I'm just, I'm only on the cuff, but I'm really excited to get back into the color work. I got into, I think, seven rows of the color work before I ripped the mitten out completely to start over. So I can't wait to get back into them. And they are living in my Jack Skellington bag. Can we just talk about how like Beetlejuice and Halloween and lovely this inside is? And this is by um, my friend who just opened her own Etsy shop for project bags, Vixens Fixins on Etsy. And she, I really like this because now when I walk around and knit on things, like when I put socks in here, the bag's not gonna be tilted sideways, like if the handle was this way. 
I'm very excited about this. But this is also like a massive bag. Like I can definitely fit a small shawl on this thing. There's two full, yeah, two full skeins of yarn in here. So I love it. I don't think she's got a tag. No, she doesn't have a tag yet, but um, I love it. I'm so excited for her. So that is my pumpkin make along uh, contribution. I would like to knit the other because pumpkins by sock in my colorway but I think I'm a little bit socked out, so. Nope, I almost started knitting on this. Can't do that, we got a podcast. Last make-along news, we have the Coco dress slash Tilly and the Buttons make-along that is happening, and that started September 1st, is going to the 30th. And you guys, uh, one girl did her dress in like, I don't know, six hours according to my Ravelry math, so that was amazing. Um, there's only a couple days left in the month, but if you want to check out the thread for fabric ideas or just general inspiration, motivation, I definitely would. I have finished my cocoa dress. I'm going to stand up and show you here. So here is the pattern by Tilly and the Buttons, and I did this version. I haven't put pockets on it yet. I don't think the pockets fit my phone, so I'm not gonna do it. But here we go. Ta-da! Cocoa dress. I love this thing. I think I've worn it, I don't know, five times in the past two weeks. It's amazing. It's this knit fabric. Try and get close. It's a medium weight knit fabric, so it's fairly thick. It's very, it's warm, but because it's a shorter dress, it's still, it's still nice in this uh, very summery like fall. Try and get a close up. And it's got this like crimped pattern kind of, you can see it here. Yep, I didn't do any pattern matching because it's a large floral on a black background and it was just, the directions were very easy to follow and it was quick. It took me, I want to say about four hours uh, from cutting out the fabric to finishing it. I did end up taking it in about two inches all the way around except for the very bottoms. The sizing came out a little bit larger than what the um, pattern said but not significantly. I think I just like the more form fitting of outfits. So it just, you know, might be, I prefer the close to uh, zero ease on my garments instead of a larger, more flowy kind of dress situation. So that might've been it. Other than that, it was great. The directions were really easy. They had really nice pictures that showed you and they, their pictures were with um, pattern matching. So I find that very helpful. That way if I do pattern match, I kind of have more of a guide to follow. I am hoping to make a striped version of this. I just want to find some, I don't know if I want black and white stripes or less contrasty stripes. But I love it. I love this dress. I love the fabric. I love the fit. I love the feel. It's amazing. I want 100, maybe 150. And that is it for make along. And ooh, what is my hair doing? That is my FO for the week, this. My Coco dress is my F.O. and it's definitely gotten the sewing bug going. We have some very romantic tea from David's Tea in our Hogwarts mug. Oops. Our Coco dress is done, which is going to lead us into a Ryan Beck prep because let's be serious, that's all we're doing. That's it. That's, that's what I'm living for right now. Closest to being finished is my So Faded sweater. This is the Andrea Mowry So Faded. And this is my Franco faded because, yes, 75% uh, Franco V knits and then one La Bienna May. So here we go. Ta -da! I decided to go with the three quarter sleeves because I think I did the math wrong for um, the trying to match the fade up on the sleeve. I mean, I didn't anyway, but I just got mad. So I decided to make it a three quarter sleeve. It ends about here on me. So I think that's perfect. I always push up my sleeves on my sweater anyway. So why make the sleeve if I'm just going to roll it up? And I have second one picked up and uh, I have seven more decreases to go. I'm knitting it on a pair of nine circulars, US three, Knitter's Pride Novas. The body of the sweater was knit on a three and the cuffs are knit on a one and a half because I didn't have a two big enough to do the bottom ribbon. Am I showing you the front of the, I don't know. I think this is the front, yeah. So there we go. Uh, I'm not gonna list all the yarns because I've said them a million times. When it's done, I will. 
I just love it. It fits perfectly. I tried it on after uh, I finished the body and it, I'm gonna not agree. I'm gonna block it slightly so it's got a little bit more room, but the way it fits right now is perfect. I love it. I can definitely fit another shirt under it, but I can wear it at, as a standalone garment. I'm so excited for it. I can't wait. So this is Rhinebeck sweater number one. Almost there. There it is. Ow. I didn't bring my sock over. Bots. Rhinebeck sweater number two is the Hope Cardigan by Amy Christoffers. And in the vlog I showed you I finished the first half and I am 10 out of 13 increases into the sleeve on the second half. So it is going. It is chugging along. Um, I think I'm gonna focus on finishing the So Faded and then um, focus on doing this. I would like, so what is my hair doing? Ooh, maybe I shouldn't have a white background. Then you can see the crazy. Focus on finishing the So Faded and then really focus on getting this guy very close to being done. Um, I'm knitting this on my Knit Pro Zings, uh, 3.75 millimeter, US 5, and it is the Lana Plante Ramboulet Dyed in Marigolds. So I am, this is skein number two, so I'm gonna cake up skein number three today because we're getting mighty close. I think I'm really only gonna need to break into it for the last bit of the button band, but we'll find out. Yeah, um, this one I think I'm gonna uh, block a little bit more aggressively. I did a gauge swatch, I did the maths, and I'm still a little bit nervous that this might turn out a little bit small, but it's gonna be an open face cardigan, so it doesn't need to close all the way. And I roll up my sleeves a lot, so I'm hoping that works. We will find out. Don't wanna talk about it right now. Man, I hope this fits. So there is a little close up. I am just loving this detail right here so much. So that has been a chug along. I haven't uh, picked it up as much as I would like to, but being so close on a project where you can just knit and knit and knit, knit has sort of uh, put this on not the like the side burner, like the the warming burner, like the te it's the teapot, and it's been boiled already. It's just hanging out, but it's still warm enough for some cocoa. Rhinebeck sock talk. Oh god, nope. We have put some serious damage into our, this is the sweater weather colorway by Nomadic Yarns. From, it is a Rhinebeck sweater from last year. Uh, Mama Gerg's got me a skein for Christmas or my birthday. I don't remember if she bought it for Christmas, but it didn't come in in time, so she just hid it till my birthday. You know, one of those things. So there we go. I'm knitting this on Chowgu Nine Inch Circulars, but I don't enjoy it, so I'm going to take it off of these and put it on some, I think DPNs. I think I want some DPNs. I'm at the point where I want to put a heel, so I have to pick a heel color. And go! I just did a one by one twisted rib for the top, 64 stitches, and just knit. Knit until I decided I like the length. Not a lot to talk about. I am in love with these colors. They are everything that I want in a fall sock and more. And I have the gob gobstopper, which is just a giant squishy ball of deliciousness. Oh, they just make me so happy. I love it. So that is happening. I'm hoping they can be Rybex socks, but I don't. They might just be the socks I knit on at Rhinebeck. I don't think I'm going to finish the pair before Rhinebeck. Uh, I would rather focus on finishing the sweaters. I do have one more sweater I would really like to work on. Do I have the yarn here? Hold on. I should. I dyed it. There it is. I am hoping, dreaming, that if I can get the Hope Cardigan close enough to being done, I can cast on the Mayette Cardigan. It's by Andy Satterland. And it's, um... 
just a very simple cropped three-quarter sleeve cardigan, but I want to knit it in my no sleeve till Rhinebeck colorway. So I dyed it up on the Cecil base, and I'm hoping because it's a Aran weight crop sweater that it should take me like six hours to knit. It's on big needles, it's big yarn. I think I can do it. I hope I can do it. We'll find out. That's the, the maybe sweater. If not, I can always wear it next year and just be really ahead of the game. That's it for knitting Rhinebeck prep. Um, this is going to be one of my Rhinebeck dresses. I think I'm going to wear my tulip skirt with the so faded. Um, I think that's the plan. I was going to do the Ariel skirt by Tilly and the Buttons, but I didn't have enough fabric. And then I used up what fabric I had left of that material to hem the bottom of my um, Elizabethan skirt. And I think that it belonged there. It definitely works better there than it would in a skirt. And I don't, I'm not gonna have much time to go to the fabric store between now and Rhinebeck. And I don't think there's anything in my stash that really wants to be that skirt. So. We might just wear the tulip skirt and we are going to finish making our I have sticky notes with all my measurements. Halloween dress, which is a simplicity one four two five. Yep. And we are making version A, which has the lace back, except this is a this is clearly a top. As you can see, what we did was we pattern hacked and we took this, honestly, I kind of find them dumb. I don't know what it is. It's like a little skirt for your shirt. I just extended that out into two panels to be a front and back. Well, three panels, one front, two in the back. And I have the material cut out for this dress. Here is, I think this is a piece of the bottom or the bodice. So this is the body and it is this very lightweight, I got it in the apparel section of Joann's. I have no idea what it is. I'm sure it's a polyester blend of some sort. I totally forgot. But it's just a fairly shiny black fabric. I might even just turn it inside out and do this, but I kind of like I kind of like this. And for the lace section, my lace is going to blow away. I got this spider web lace. So this is Is this a back? Yeah. So the back will all be lace and then there's a lace section in front and I might do uh, three quarter sleeves if I feel like it slash if I have time uh, we'll see how it looks Wait, I might I might just do the sleeves I don't know I haven't decided yet uh, I'm gonna do a black Peter Pan collar and yeah so this will be my Halloween uh, Ryan Beck dress and I can't wait. I do want to do a cardigan for this so then you can see the lace bit and I can have it open. So I think this will be the Hope cardigan or maybe the Ryan Beck sweater cardigan. I finish that because I think this will be really cute together. And to go with them, I bought myself a pumpkin chicken nugget and a Dracula chicken nugget to go on the collar. So then I have little chicken nugget collar pieces. <laughs> Uh, this is my life. So I have a, I have all the pieces cut out. I cut them out the other weekend while I was at home and resting my arms from knitting. So they are all living in my fancy IGA bag. I just haven't had a moment to sit down and sew them. I do want to serge the seams. Um, a friend from my knit group is letting me house this. She bought it to make her children clothes. Realized she didn't have time to do that. So instead of letting it sit in the box, she said I can like have it and use it. And then if she needs it back for something, I'll just bring it back to her. And then when she's done, she'll bring it back to me. And I'm just like, mm, lease leasing it. I'm giving it a good home. I haven't figured out how to use it yet. We're still working on it. it took me an hour and a half to thread it. I think I got that down. I think, I think we're there. So. I'm hoping maybe this weekend after the Connecticut yarn crawl, I can uh, scoot home for a little bit and sort of give it a whirl. Cause I know the dress isn't gonna take a long time to put together. I just need to sit down and do it. But I haven't decided, this pattern calls for buttons. 
It calls for three buttons, so I might... I haven't decided how I'm gonna close it yet. I don't think I wanna put a zipper in there, but I think I might just increase the buttons and do like a hook and eye for the skirt bit. I haven't, I haven't thought that through yet. It's coming, we've got like three weeks and I'm terrified and excited and terrified. <laughs> I have been knitting on other things though. We have, so our friends who just got married, they, her, their now sister slash sister-in-law has a four month old and she asked me if I could knit her a little dress to do their like first fall photo shoot. So I agreed because baby dresses are tiny and easy and they're like just giant socks. And I cast on a sweet pea dress. This is the uh, dress by Mina Phillip, Knitting Expat. And I added sleeves, so I just took a generic baby cardigan pattern and used the sleeve decreases and measurements to do that. I still kept the Pico bind off and in garter stitch so then she can just flip it up. If it's, It will be too long. I knit them about an inch and a half to two inches longer than all the measurements for, I think this is a six to 12 month size. That way she can wear it for as long, as long as possible. So it's still a really cute little cuff thing. Uh, it's in my hand dyed yarn on the Audrey base, which is the 8020 uh, BFL nylon, which I think I'm retiring. I think I'm going to change. I'm going to change the base. I, I found another BFL base I really like. So I think I'm going to switch over to that. Yeah. I think I'm gonna, I don't, I really, I like the, I like this base, but it just doesn't excite me anymore. So we gotta, we gotta change with the, with the times. Um, these are not regular colorways. I nicknamed this pink one uncomfortably pink because it is quite pink. It's coming out uh, darker on screen than it is in real life. And then this is, uh, I used the base for the apple crumble colorway. And then I added some gray and some uh, orange speckles there. I think they're really cute together and I'm very excited to see them done. So it's just a giant uh, sock right now. I have to do the Pico bind off on the sleeve still. I was on the train and I didn't want to do that. No one wants to do that. I'm knitting it on size four US Carbons and it's just been a fun little uh, like palette cleanser knit. I don't have to think. I just knit and knit and knit and knit and knit and knit. And knit. And that's really the only, that's uh, that's what I've been working on. Not a lot else, uh, a little bit here and there for work, but nothing too crazy. So we are going to go into, <laughs> next we have, uh, I guess it's stash building. There's a little bit from gifts and a little bit of uh, me totally breaking my yarn diet. We're gonna do all the stuff I got first and then I'm gonna do the gift slash review afterwards. So in order of re re receiving, if anyone watches uh, Inside Number 23, which you should, if you don't, stop this and go, run, just run now. Uh, KT has made about a dozen of these dresses and ever since I saw the first one, I wanted the pattern and stalked the website repeatedly for months, years it feels like, but really just months. And they finally re-released it. And that is Deer and Doe's Rogue Blue A. I got it. So this is the Rogue Blue A dress by Deer and Doe. I haven't made, haven't even made the pattern yet. I just sit, I just sit down and read the directions. I love it. The packaging is beautiful and simple, and I love it. The like, the pattern is diesel. Like this is, there's a massive like it. It feels like this is not, like if I cut out the pattern, it is not gonna go anywhere. It's not gonna deteriorate if a dog drools on it. It's not gonna rip if I like breathe too hard. They have instructions in, do they have in both? I think, yeah, they have it in French and English. So I can even challenge myself with my French skills that I don't have, but pretend. I am just so in love with it. I do like the fact that you can do sleeveless. I like the sleeveless dresses a lot because I wear, I can wear them in the summer and then I can just put cardigans and sweaters over them in the winter. I do like, 
I like the idea of having a summer and then a winter wardrobe. But I'm not very good at changing my wardrobe out. I have sweaters and then they stay in their sweater bags until about March when I remember I have sweaters. So I do like, I'm more of a person who has a year long wardrobe with two or three pieces that are definitely summer. Like this I cannot wear in July. That's not gonna happen. But something like this with the sleeveless, I can definitely wear it in July. I can wear it in December. I like, I like that a lot. I need something that's all year round. That way I'm not rotating things out. I also lose things very easily. So if I rotate my stuff out, I may never see them again. I'm just so excited. I don't know what fabric I'm gonna use this for. I was hoping to do a Disney princess dress in this, but I don't think the pieces are large enough to do it. So I'm going to do a Gertie pattern for those. I'm just keeping an eye out for the perfect fabric. I'm so happy it's here. It just sits on my desk so I can stare at it lovingly. I love almost all of their patterns. I am very excited to get more of them. The other stash enhancement that I definitely shouldn't have bought but have been wanting for, mm, I don't know, a year, year and a half, ever since Jinx came out with this, is the Jack and Sally colorway from Jinx yarn. It is one of her Halloween to Christmas self-striping. And I'm so happy I got it. I have one other Jinx skein, which was her five year business anniversary, the champagne and confetti. I somehow managed to snap a skein of that and I got a skein of this and oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited, it's so soft. I have it on the Strong Sock, which is 80-20 Superwash Merino and Nylon. And there we I think I'm gonna cast on a sock on Halloween and have this be my Halloween knit and then cast on the other sock uh, Christmas Eve and have that be my Christmas Eve cast on. Well, this one of my, my box of socks up over here because I picked out my 12 skeins and then totally ignored all of them. The last thing I got was I had to order some stuff from Knit Picks and to get free shipping you just you know you gotta do what you gotta do. I didn't even get the free shipping I just bought this book and some yarn. <laughs> I picked up the Top Down Sweater book by Anne Budd. This was like a comfortable, I wanted to say it's like sitting down and reading your favorite cookbook, but I don't know if a lot of people read their cookbooks. I, I enjoy reading my cookbooks like novels. I'm so excited for this. I, I don't want to say I have a sweater design ready to go, but I have a sweater design in my brain that is itching to come out and play. And this is exactly what it needs. It gives you four or five, yeah, it gives you the five, four different styles, like cardigan, raglan, set in sleeve, and a saddle sleeve, I think. Saddle shoulder. It's got charts for children's sizes up to adult sizes. It's got patterns in here for, um, like a ribbed cardigan. So it's got the pattern for a lot of these, but it also just has the generic, um, the generic numbers that you need to plug in to knit a sweater. The CASA numbers to do like a V-neck sweater versus what you need to do to do like a seamed top down. I just love it. I love it. Anne Bud is a genius. I think I've knit one sweater of hers for Jake. The goat herder pullover, I believe, was Anne Bud. I think that was Anne Bud. Oh, I love it. And it was uh, it was on sale for eighteen dollars on Knit Picks instead of thirty. Thirty U.S. Thirty four Canadian. So I would highly recommend this if not if you want to design sweaters, but if you just want to make them fit you better or change the way you knit them. Does that make sense? If you wanna modify sweater patterns, I would recommend this. And it's spiral bound, so everything lays flat, which I really appreciate right now in my life. There we go, this makes sense. It gives you all the measurements for like an average child, adult, male adult, I'm very excited for this book. All right, this was 
a gift sent to me by Eva Christie from the Eva Christie Hand Knitting Podcast and the brains and heart and life force between the Perth Festival of Yarn in Perth, Scotland. And she sent me a copy of their, um, this was I think like the festival pattern booklet uh, collection called With This Skein. There's the front bit. And it is one, two, three, four, five. A uh, collection of five patterns. Let's, I'm gonna read you the, uh, the thing. We are delighted to support emerging knitwear designers, both homegrown and from Canada. The beautiful yarn showcased within this collection are all from vendors at this year's festival, and we've included links to their online shops should you be unable to attend. So this is all yarns from people who are vending at the Perth Festival of Yarn, and all fairly local designers to Perth and also Canada. So they've got um, two shawls, socks, two mitts, and a hat pattern. There we go. And I really... I'm really enjoying the second shawl, the socks, and the colorwork mittens. I'm really enjoying colorwork mittens right now, so that's a thing. And it's just a very well curated collection of simple but can be challenging if you're a new knitter. Like this could be your, your step into some more challenging lace socks or bigger shawls. Uh, the patterns are right next to the picture of each piece so a lot of magazines like they have the lookbook section where they they have all the modeled pictures and all the like some information about it and then you have to go to the back of the book to get the pattern but this it's all laid out right there so you go through the first shawl everything's there second shawl everything's there i am excited about the traveling texture shawl i feel like that would be a really fun challenge for um i'm trying not to like super I feel like that'd be a really fun challenge for yarn pairings to see what you could do with like light speckles versus tonals to keep the textures in the pattern but play around with it. I am also excited for the Fair Made socks. I feel like these would be a really fun intro to lace socks if you're a newer sock knitter or just haven't really gotten onto that bandwagon. I think this is a fantastic collection and perfect for exactly what they said, like something for a festival. So then if you know you want it at the mall, you can just take this collection with you around the festival and pick out what yarn. And then all the yarn you bought has projects already. And who doesn't want to do that with their yarn? Ooh, what is this doing? All right, so that is with the skein, the pattern collection from the Perth Festival of Yarn 2017. And you can find this collection if you are interested on the Perth Festival of Yarn website. I believe it's perthfestivalofyarn.co.uk. It's about 10 pounds. Uh, I'm going to put a link down below so if you want to find it. And I would guess that these patterns should be on Ravelry soon if they're not already up there. So thank you so much, Eva, for sending me a copy and letting me know about this. I think the first shawl would be really good for hand spun. And I'm very excited to see what my hand spun stash has for that when I want to knit shawls again. It's coming back, but it's not there yet. I still want sweaters. I threw my show notes so far. <laughs> when Becky came, uh, Becky from Soprano Knits and the Stringing It Together podcast, I thought someone was yelling in my window, came to visit in New York. I gave her a little bit of a yarn present to, you know, to say thank you for being my friend and I love you a little bit. As knitters do, uh, we, when we don't know how to say our feelings, we just throw yarn at you. And she offered to send me some yarn from Germany that she can get really easily, that is not so easily found in the US for cheapy cheap, which was amazing because I really want to try these yarns, but they are quite expensive in the US, if not just uh, Connecticut. So she sent me some Regia yarn in the Perfect Design line. I don't know if it's got a name. I don't think it does. No, no, But this is the pattern, and I really like it. I like that it's got the contrasting heels and toes like already set up. How cool is that? So she sent me uh, a skein of this, and I'm super excited to get into this. This is, this is sort of bringing back my sock mojo, and it's living in this adorable little cloud bag she made me because we made cloud things together. How cute is this? 
I'm so excited. I'm only gonna knit German yarn out of this. I need to get more German yarn. And I told her if she couldn't find one, don't worry about it, but she got me a Zauber ball, which I've been lusting after for so long, but I could not justify the money, which sometimes makes me laugh when I buy like really nice hand-dyed yarn from people. It is definitely more than the Zauber ball, but I don't, I don't know. But she got me this one and it's the Oktoberfest colorway. How perfect is this? And she sent along Strumpful. Strumpful. So I kind of want to put these two together. They are single plies, but I'm gonna... I mean, come on. How perfect is that? It's just like the perfect little autumn pot snowman. It's a, little, it's a perfect little autumn yarn man. Oh, I need to get a smaller one. So thank you so much, Becky. I cried a little bit when I opened this because everything was perfect and beautiful. And I can't wait to cast it on. I woke up Jake so I could show him and he was not impressed, but I'm very impressed. And she sent along this adorable postcard, which I need to get framed. It says, everyone's crazy here. Come on, unicorn, we're leaving. I love it. I wanna put it in a frame and put it up here. I feel like it'd be really nice over here. Thank you, Becky. That was the best package I could have received this week. And your bag is adorable. It's just so cheerful. All right, last couple bits are shop news and life things. So if you are not here for that and you have survived this rambly crazy mess of knitting, thank you so much for watching so far. And if you are here for the rest of the crazy, let's get into it. There was no shop update this Monday um, because tomorrow, Friday, September 29th, I am having a trunk show slash pop-up at A Stitch in Time in Bethel, Connecticut to kick off the Western Connecticut Yarn Crawl. So we are going to be at their new location in Bethel on Stony Hill Road, Stony Hill Ave, I think it's Route 6. I am going to link it below so you can, if you were in the area and you were doing the yarn crawl, you can come check it out. So all of the dyeing has been going towards that. There will be a update on Monday at 4 p.m. of everything that didn't sell at the update. So I will post that to Instagram and I will put that in the newsletter this week when I send it out. I think I'm gonna send it out tonight. So I don't really have anything to show you for that. I will probably do some stuff, something on Instagram on Monday morning letting you know what is going to be there. The shop is on vacation because I am taking some of the yarn from the shop to the trunk show, so it's just easier, easier that way. Oh, there are a lot of shows coming up. I will have them all on the website, onceuponacorgi.com. You can always go there. There's a calendar under the about section. I'm going to try and put it on the front page just to make it easier to see where we are going to be this season. Uh, Stitch in Time in Bethel this Friday. October 19th, the Thursday, before Rhinebeck, I will be at Nitty City for the pre-Rhinebeck party. November 4th and 5th, I will be at New England Fiber Festival in booth 536. December 3rd, I will be at Christmas, the Connecticut Christmas Gift Show at the Aquaturf in Plantsville, Connecticut. Mom just called me. I forgot where I was. Um, yeah, all the dates I just listed will be on the website. So I'm going to try and have updates between each one, but the week to week and a half before each show, I will not be having updates and I will let you know as this happens. As this happens. Yeah. So life things. Uh, last I talked to you was the Renaissance Fair vlog, which was amazing and super fun. The rest of the month has just been, I don't, crazy busy but at the same time I feel like I haven't done a lot kind of thing. I did go out to dinner with um, a bunch of people on Tuesday to celebrate all the September birthdays which uh, Jacqueline from Jacqueline, Mina, and Tanya all have September birthdays so we went out with Julie and Kristen and Denise. Yep and we went to this lovely place called the Tree Bistro. Uh, it's in the east it's in the East Village in New York City, and it was amazing. It was so good. I dream about those fried goat cheese fritters. Oh, they were so good. So that was that that week. 
Um, I did something last weekend, but I totally forgot. I also had crepes on Tuesday. Tuesday was just filled with delicious food. Oh no, I worked on Tuesday. That's what I did. No, I worked on Saturday. That's what I did on Saturday. Uh, I, it's just been a crazy, crazy thing. Lots of sweater knitting, lots of plans. We've got a wedding coming up. Um, October 7th, we have the Western Connecticut Yarn Crawl this weekend, and then we're going to the Coventry Farmer's Market on Sunday for the Fiverr and Friends weekend, which is always a blast, and I just go for the cannolis and cheese and alpaca, so as long as you know what your list is. What's up, bud? Did you bring me a tennis ball? Can I see it? Come here. Yeah, so uh, yarn crawl this weekend. I'm going to go to the Bristol, Torrington, Avon, and Kent store. Uh, Mom and Adrian will be going to the Bethel, Newtown, Ridgefield, and Westport store uh, tomorrow while I'm in Bethel. Those are the ones I live closest to, so I'm there pretty often. Uh, next weekend... Oh god, no, next weekend is the wedding, and then the weekend after that is a blank weekend, and then the weekend after that is Rhinebeck. Oh god. We're just living show to show for the next couple months. I'm excited. I do love festival season. I love doing, I love vending the festivals and the shows and stuff. I love meeting you guys and seeing everybody, and when people wear their knits, it just warms my heart and blows my mind all at the same time. So I'm excited for this season to come up. I've got a lot of ideas, I've got a lot of stuff going on. I can't wait. I'm gonna try and do some mini vlogs while I'm um, in a boot this weekend too, so. All right, so I'm gonna let you go. I have got a lot of labeling and organizing and things to do for tomorrow. And sweater knitting, a uh, winner for the giveaway, the cramped hand number 111 in the Hedgehog Fiber giveaway, uh, get in contact with me. If you want to get in contact with me, you can reach me um, on Ravelry is probably your best bet at Gabigail's. Um, Instagram doesn't always tell me when I get messages. So uh, <laughs> Ravelry or Etsy at Once Upon a Corgi, those are going to be the easiest ways to get in contact with me. And if you want to have current information about the shop, uh, you can go to the website and sign up for the newsletter. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, you will have a little subscription. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for coming back and supporting us and the shop and the podcast. And I hope that this episode wasn't totally crazy. Let me know what you think about the format of being more project-based instead of um, sectional by like where I'm at with the projects, like having like, this is my pumpkin knit along information and project. And then this is my like next goal projects with sewing and knitting, you know, let me know. I'm always looking to change things up a little bit. So I'm gonna let you go. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys have a good week or a couple of weeks, depends on when I see you next. Bye.